Welcome to Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Charney. In this episode, we talk about Microsoft and Apple handset problems and virtual reality. Apple, for the first time since the launch of their smartphone in 2007, is having some issues starting more as selling more handsets in the previous quarter, as this is the first time it's actually dropped in sales. Now, just a a little bit of information about the iPhone. I know a lot of people have one, but the iPhone was one of the very, very first uh, phones of its type. It was the first really good looking smartphone. Granted, there were other smartphones. There was the Samsung Blackjack and HP had one that was basically a, a Palm Pilot or PDA, personal digital assistant with a cell phone attached. But this was the first one that just worked well and had the Apple flair. Um, Apple always has always has had some of the most amazing industrial design on the planet. But unfortunately, with that, you're also getting a, a cost attached to that. And I think that's one of the issues people are having is they just do not see a complete reason to upgrade to the latest models. I, you don't can't really blame them, though. I mean, you, you know, when the 6S 6, uh, or 7S or 7 comes out, you know, and you're looking at a $600 price tag, when your 4 or 4S or 5 or 5S just seems to work perfectly. Now, the One of the issues Apple's having now is because everything is an evolutionary step. You never see any revolutionary steps lately from Apple. And they're also having the same thing with their desktop and product lines. If you take a look, all their processors and all the stuff they're putting in the laptops are just minor jumps processor speed maybe some clock speeds maybe you get a little bit better ram but nothing like crazy i think the biggest change they did was putting the retina displays on their their uh, laptops ipads and etc so what do you do about that i mean how do you sell products to people who are just content with what it is and i don't think lowering the price is going to do anything because my because apple excuse me is a luxury brand they sell a lifestyle product Everything in Apple's lifestyle product, including their $12,000 iMac Pro that looks like a trash can. And I think that's going to bite them in the butt a little bit. But now at this point, I don't think they can drop the price. I think what they're going to have to do is figure out how to sell to emerging markets. Because the proliferation of iPhones, at least in the United States, is everywhere. I mean, I think at least last time I looked, it was one of the number one phones. I think it's the number two right behind Android. And I think Android's only popular because basically Google provides the platform and the operating system. All you have to do is stay to some design spec. I mean, HTC and Samsung are some of the number one selling headsets in the last couple of years. And the Samsung Galaxy, you know, those are the 6 and 6, uh, what was it? The 6 and 6 Edge and the 7 Edge, 7 7 Edge are great looking handsets. I think the 7 Edge is a little bit of a gimmick personally, but we'll see what other people think down the road. I have a friend who who has one and, and I wouldn't say he was too impressed. The camera, by the way, is absolutely amazing. But to get back about Apple, Apple has a really big problem selling their phones right now to people because you can't really blame them. I mean, when you have something that works, I mean, right now I have a 6 Plus and I absolutely love it. But right now I don't see a particular reason to upgrade to the 6S Plus or even the 7. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll buy the next phone just because I like Apple products um, when it comes at least to their cell phones. I'm more of a Windows user, but we'll talk about more about my personal predilection to using operating systems later down the road. But the 6 the six Plus for me works perfectly. I mean, it's completely paid off. And what are you going to do? I mean, it's really, I think at this point, you're really hard off to buy a new phone for me because everything works. And I think that's the number one thing they're going to have is what do you do when everything works? Now, if I were them, I'd probably listen to their audience. I mean, I think a lot of people, they definitely listen to the audience when they launched the 6 Plus because the 4 and 4S for me, even the 5 and 5S were just too small. I mean, I've got baseball mitts for hands. So I think the 6 Plus was definitely listening to the audience. So what would you as the audience want different? I mean, I love I, I, I love the fingerprint scanner because I think it works really well. I want to see what the new, uh, was it 3D or virtual touch or whatever they call it on the new phones? Um, I don't know what you would do differently, I man. It's better. The only thing I wish they would have is allow you to have some things like, say, Wi-Fi sniffers. Now, what a Wi-Fi sniffer does is, and I don't know if any of you do IT work, but basically what it does is it tells me what the surrounding, the proliferation of Internet is out there. And for me, that's a big thing because if I'm setting up somebody's, uh, you know, say I'm setting up my, one of my friend's Wi-Fi networks, I want to see what channel everybody's on. You know, say if everybody's on 5 and 6, I can say, okay, I'm going to set you to 11 because you're going to get a lot less interference on 11 than you will on 1 and 2, say, if everybody's there. And so they don't have that. And it just so I have to bring a laptop and I just find it a giant pain in the butt when I should, in theory, be able to just use my cell phone because it has everything that my laptop does. And so I think software right now is going to be a big thing. I think they're going to have to 
give it a little leeway on what you can do. Loosen the reins, as it were. I mean, don't get me wrong. I actually like the fact Apple has a, a heavy rein on their apps in their app store. I think that's the way to go, especially, you know, for me, if, you know, when I have kids, is I can generally trust Apple's, you know, stop, you know, the, the app store. I, well, you'll find out later on if you guys play with it a little bit more. I mean, I like App Store. I like the Play Store. They're pretty much the same thing. The hardware spec, though, my Apple's never been on the high-end side. They usually make sure everything's baked in for a while before they use it. One of the reasons Apple doesn't still really have NFC than the Android phones have it. I've had it for years. Matter of fact, there's a speaker that I tested um, from a company that's escaping me that actually has NFC built in. Basically, turn on NFC, put the phone on the speaker, boom, automatically syncs. It's a great piece of kit. And this is also one of the issues I think Microsoft is having is they're now selling their smartphone business to Foxconn for $350 million. And this is after they bought the Nokia, the Nokia brand and Nokia stuff and factories from uh, Nokia. I, it just seems like such a poor business decision, but it seemed like a big, bad decision to begin with, especially after the fact that they don't technically own the name Nokia. I mean, if I remember correctly, I think they end up was end up like a long term leasing agreement. So somewhere down the pike, Nokia can actually make phones again under the Nokia brand, and they're selling everything. Uh, but there is, it's selling to a subset of Foxconn called FIH Mobile for three hundred fifty. million. the deal will see four, four excuse me, four thousand five hundred employees transfer over to Foxconn subsidiary and Microsoft handing over the rights to use Nokia brand, featuring phone software services, contracts, and other agreements. So this is basically Microsoft raising their hands and. Saying, Saying, you know, I give up. We're done. We we shouldn't have done this. This is the same thing HP did with WebOS. You know, except HP basically washed their hands and made a uh, WebOS open source, and now you see it on TVs. I just saw it on a TV recently. I think it was an LG uh, LG TV that had WebOS three on it. So I think that's amazing. Uh, sorry, a little bit of a sidebar. I don't know. I think Microsoft is still going to make Windows Phone or Windows Mobile Phone or whatever exactly the name of it, the flavor of it is right now. The big problem they have with that is nobody has one. I mean, you see it in cheaper phones like GoPhone, Smart Talk, and stuff like that, but I've never seen anybody with a higher-end Nokia phones in the wild. I've just never seen it. I've never seen anybody, what was it? There was a Nokia phone that had that giant camera on the back. Never seen one in person. I've never seen it in person. So I just don't think they're going to, I don't know. I think this was the right thing to do was Microsoft just cut and bait and run. Microsoft said they're still going to be making apps and still going to be releasing updates for the operating system, which is good for Foxconn because otherwise they're buying something they can't do anything with. You know, maybe the contracts will be helpful. Um, So I don't know. What do you think? I mean, do you think this is a good move, bad move? Do you think this is Microsoft basically cutting bait and running and saying we're done we don't want to do it anymore i mean it's still a big market for them especially in emerging mark emerging markets i think the best thing they did for them was basically aiming for lower priced phones i mean some of the the windows mobile phones that i've seen excuse me windows phone or windows mobile phone whatever you call it the windows phones you see is on the go phones i mean for 50 60 bucks you get a pretty decent phone and an operating system that's pretty baked in already and so i think that was the market they should have aimed for in the first place instead of making these ridiculously overpriced phones that nobody's going to use and no apps are available for it too like instagram and there's a bunch of other apps that i think for a while they were paying people to make apps for don't get me wrong you know if i got on the you know if microsoft gave me a call and said hey john why don't you make an app for us like sure like hand over the cash i'll do it i mean that's not a problem you can check out you know you can check out blah 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 app i would totally do that i just i don't know so what do you guys think though total do you think apple isn't doing the right thing just by staying the course and making uh, evolutionary steps do you think microsoft is doing a bad thing by selling their entire feature phone business the foxconn i mean it's 350 million dollars but is that going to recoup all the costs that revolved within everything they did far as but when they bought nokia you know we'll definitely see down the road and right now we're heading towards a break so i'll see you after the break welcome back from the break and this time we're going to talk about a little bit of streaming boxes and entertainment stuff. And so this is stuff like the Roku and Chromecast. And this is the things we're going to talk about for the next bit. And the first one to bring up is the Roku. And there's multiple models of the Roku. There's the Roku stick that's pretty much looks like a thumb drive with an HDMI attached. There's the model one through three. And the number four is the latest and greatest model, which has 4K streaming. And 4K right now is definitely the big thing. You, you look at Walmart, Kmart, you know, Best Buy, all these brands, you're starting to see really heavy in the 4K. Now, 4K is still somewhat bleeding edge. 
but not as not as much as it used to be three four three or four years ago. I went to the Consumer Electronics Show, and this is when you were starting to see the the four K TVs, and you're talking about you know ten twenty thirty thousand dollars for a decent sized television. But the same thing happened when 1080p came down the you know the line. So I. I really dig those TVs and I really love the Roku. The best thing about the Roku is everybody from 80 to 18 will be able to use it. No problems at all. The GUI is simple. It's perfect. I don't think, and I have two models. I have one of the original boxes and I've got the number three that's a couple of years old. And my favorite thing about it is they update it. Now, a lot of the issues the smart TVs have, at least tradition in the past, is they don't always update the software. So you can have the latest and greatest model, but you have an older version of it. Or, you know, say if you bought, you know, 2015 model and 2016, 2016s came out, they don't always upgrade the software. So you're stuck with a bunch of stuff you really don't want or just doesn't work, you know, or say Netflix changes the APIs or coding or something. I'd See, that's why I think that the Roku streaming stick and the Chromecast is perfect because it's an all-in-one device and that is their bread and, bread and butter. They're not going to be they're not going to be ignoring that. And the Chromecast is another amazing piece of kit. Now, the Chromecast is a tad bit different from traditional streaming devices. Pretty much what a Chromecast is, is it's a little stick. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much you know like an HDMI with thumb drive. You plug it in, and what you do is you sync it with your Wi-Fi. Now, the difference between this one and Roku's and other traditional ones is this basically uses your smartphone or tablet to point to a content. You know, say if you're, uh, for example, say if you go to Stitcher, click on Golden State Media Concepts, one of their podcasts, like the MMA podcast, for example. Click, and what you do is click a button. Usually, it's somewhere on there, and you you stream it straight to your television. The best thing about it is it'll just keep keep continue playing through episodes and episodes. And what it does is your phone is acting just as a pointer. It's saying, "Hey, Chromecast." I want you to watch this at this website and the Chromecast takes over, it takes 100% control over and then you can just sit back and relax. It's not using anything on your cell phone. The negative and positive to me of this is the positive st thing is it's like, well, it's like 50 bucks. I mean, it's super cheap and it works really well. The negative side about it, I think in some ways is you're completely dependent on your smartphone. The best thing about that is anybody can make it a compatible with it. So if you make an app, say listening to old time radio, you can click a button and broadcast it straight to the Chromecast or if you have your YouTube channel or whatever. It's an amazing piece of kit. It works really well. And for me, it's been somewhat flawless. I mean, the app side of it, the apps I've seen for it are kind of gimmicky. But on the other hand, it's kind of neat to have a gimmick that's not completely dependent on, you know, their store. Like, for example, the Roku, it's all in one. They have an approved app store and they have what's basically unapproved channels. Or it's basically you go to their website and of the you go to the website, tell the channels, you know, say if there's a, like Bob's House of Movies and these are all old movies and out of copyright type of thing. He has everything set up and basically unofficial channel store. You tell your Roku where it is and then boom, you've got a thing straight on the on the app store or, you know, whatever the layout is of the Roku. And it's just sitting there and you can click on, you know, watch Bob's house of movies. The greatest thing about com the Chromecast is you don't need to be approved. There's really no approved apps. I'm assuming as long as you have the API APIs and you tell your phone where it is. I mean, that's the brilliant thing about it. I mean, it really is an amazing piece of kit. And there are other set top boxes out there. Um, Weston Digital, I think, came out with a 4K one a while ago. I remember seeing them during Christmas. And there's a there's been a bunch of different ones for the last 10 years. And I'm a really big fan of the home theater PC. Now, the one I'm gonna the one I really want to play with right now is called Intel Nook. It's N-U-C. And I think the, the flavors I've seen of them is anywhere from the i3 to the i7. Um, in the show notes, you'll see a product breakdown of the different ones. It's an ultra small form factor PC or a USFF. Um I'd love it. And we're going to talk a little bit more sometime down the line about home theater PCs because I'm, I'm in love with them. I think they're perfect. On the other hand, they're not as cheap as some people, you know, as some devices would be. See, the best thing about the Roku, Roku is there anyone from like $49.95 to $129? I mean, that is right there, the butter zone of of prices because anybody anybody can afford it you know you got the person who you know for example works at mcdonald's can pick up the 49 dollar one won't affect his budget the person you know has a little bit more money can have the 129 4k so it's the perfect price point well if you're talking about a, a home theory pc you're, you're talking anywhere from 600 to 2000 dollars really depending on what you want to do now granted the 2000 2500 home theater pc is crazy overkill it 
there's really nothing that you can buy that I'm aware of for a home theater PC that you need. You know, maybe unless you got some insane graphics card. But at the end, you're building a you know a gaming PC that does home theater PC stuff. And but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Well, we will talk about that later down the line. I I see. What can I say? See, the one thing about the Chromecast. Roku Media Streamer and other players, the problem they really have though is they're just extra stuff. It's just an, a, another accoutrement to have it attached to your television. And, 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 and I've worked retail in the past and a lot of customers just want an all-in-one style streaming player. Now, that's the benefit of having a smart TV. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of the smart TVs because the, you know, the, the things I mentioned earlier about how they don't always upgrade the software. Granted, it's not as much the case. As it used to be, um, my dad, for example, has a Sony TV that's still getting updates like three, four years after it was purchased. So that I have to, you know, commend Sony for that. So the best thing about having a smart TV is access to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, um, Pandora, uh, Spotify. So a lot of those people are starting to do that. Have smart TV? Excuse me. Smart TVs are really 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 popular now from a lot of customers at least from friends of mine i've talked to and former experience in retail i, I don't know i i you know i mentioned i like dumb tvs and i guess i should tell a little why i mean I, you have told a couple of them but the other thing is smart tvs are just kind of expensive i mean depending on the television you're, you're either paying an extra 50 to 200 dollars depending on the brand and model so if you're paying for a high-end brand excuse me if you're paying for the high-end model you'll definitely paying more money for that version of the smart tv you know so i'd rather buy a dumb tv get the same picture visual visuals 4k everything and then just buy a cheaper model because it's 4k i mean i'm, I'm gonna make it a smart tv any, anyways using the roku chromecast or a myriad other stuff i have so that's just me and i'm a geek you know don't get me wrong i'm not really a civilian when it comes to technology because i've been doing this for a long time i'm i've been geeking out my whole life you know i built computers i do some homebrew stuff i'm trying to get into programming a little bit but it's just one of those things that just don't have time to do so what do you think do you guys like uh what do you like for streaming boxes? Do you use the Roku Chromecast as another set-top box that you really dig? I mean, give me some little uh, uh, feedback here. What do you prefer? What is your bread and butter on your entertainment? Do you solely watch it on like your tablet or your cell phone? I mean, I've actually spent quite a bit of time watching movies on my uh, my iPhone. I mean, it's not the greatest picture in the world, and it's you know a little six-inch screen, but you know, little little time on the airplane or the airport or wherever, it's perfect for watching viewing. Or do you like watching on your tablet, your Kindle Fire? How do you watch most of your entertainment? I'm really curious to find out. And you get it through traditional television like the Alphabet Networks. Let me know. Uh, you can get a go. You can contact us on our Facebook page on the Golden State Media Concepts and Technology Podcast. And let me know. I'm really curious in exactly how you watch all your entertainment. Now we're coming up to a break, so we will talk about augmented, uh, excuse me, virtual reality after the break, and we will see you later. Welcome back from the break, and now we're going to be talking about something. A little bit out of the box. Um, we're going to be talking about virtual reality. And virtual reality has been around for um, probably since the early 80s. I think the basic concept has been around. I remember in the early 90s seeing it a really big hit. I mean, as far as people want it. Nintendo came up with the Virtual Boy and there are other things. Um, I've got an article in the show notes that talks about VR products. One of them is a PC Mag article. A warning, it's a bit of a slideshow, but it shows you some of the products that have come around. And the really big ones right now are the Samsung Gear and the Oculus Rift. Now, the Oculus Rift is owned by Facebook. And I think for me, this is the one that really started piquing my curiosity again. And it's an amazing piece of hardware. It's the, honestly, it's the same basic stuff has been there before. You've got some television screens right next to your eyes. You've got, you know, headphones that are, you know, in it plugged in your ears. You've got controllers. So the basic platform and design has not changed. Now, what has changed in the last 20 years is the power the computers are putting out. Now, nowadays, if you look at video games, for example, you take your Xbox, your PlayStation 4, the visuals coming out of that are insane. The graphics are amazing. Now, this will be the first time in, in virtual reality where you're getting any of this. You're getting, you're, you're not looking like a giant blob. And I guess the best way to say it, if you take a look, there's a, a movie that came out somewhere in the mid-90s called Ghost in the Machine. It, warning, it is a horror movie. And there's a section in that movie 
where they're playing a virtual reality game. Basically, you know, you strap in this platform, you got the gloves, the whole bit, and you take a look at it. Those were the visuals we were getting at that point. Now, if you you go from there to some of the, the visuals you see now, it's hands down. It looks amazing. It's very immersive from, from my experience. And so I just, I kind of want one. Now, there's been, there's also a bunch of, there's an offshoot of it, excuse me, called augmented reality. Um, the best way I could describe augmented reality is, is usually what it is, there's a camera and there's an app overlaying information on it. A lot of people know what augmented reality, there's a stars app. I don't, it, the name's escaping me at the moment. It might be called stars, star walk. Like you hold it up, you, you hold the phone up to the sky, you move it around and it shows you the constellations. That's augmented reality. There was another one that came out years ago and I don't remember what it was called. It might've been called layers if I remember correctly. And it allowed you to lay like, you know, billboards and signs and, and just stuff over reality. It allows you to display information. And I think, see, I think that's what's really going to hit it big. And for example, there's a company called Scully that has the AR1 helmet that does exactly that. What it does is it has a GPS. So in the GPS, what it is, is the arrow actually overlays on your vision. So if you're turning left, what it does is it shows you, you know, shows you the road is, you know, basically a, a new color or, you know, a transparent color. And it'll be an offshoot, say, turn left. That to me is awesome. That's what I want. I'm not a big fan of VR personally. I mean, I kind of want to play it, but augmented reality when I'm riding my motorcycle to me is safer because I don't have to look down at my GPS or if I'm using my phone for it, I don't have to keep my eyes off the road. And when you're riding, riding a motorcycle, that split second will kill you. Trust me. So augmented reality is amazing. And there's different types of stuff. Um, Google has something called Google Translate that is supposed to translate foreign language, whether it's, you know, kanji, uh, Cyrillic, or even English, and it's a different language. So if you have French, you're supposed to be able to take a picture or highlight it, and it's supposed to change it into English. It's supposed to do the same thing, if I remember correctly, with Cyrillic and kanji. So I think right there is another amazing thing. You're in a foreign language, you're in a foreign land. Say, for example, you're, you're, you know, you're on a holiday in Japan, and you're in a section that there's no English, it's a be pretty cool and Amazing piece of kit to hold up your phone and it'll say, okay, bathroom's this way. Granted, I've never been to Japan. I don't know how much English and stuff is available. I mean, because, you know, where we are in California, there's, you know, there's Spanish and English signs all over the place. So I think that's amazing. I really want augmented reality. And the one that interests me the most is the Microsoft HoloLens. Now, the Microsoft HoloLens, you, if, you, if you type that in, there's a demo that they did with Minecraft. Now, it's the same basic thing I talked about. What it is, you've got a goggles, a camera, and a heads-up display right in front of you. But what you can do with it is totally out of a sci-fi movie. And that's what I'm looking for. I want something like that. I want to be able to interact with a virtual world on a normal world. And I, I want, um, unfortunately, I, don't, I couldn't find the link. And I know it's out there. If you type in and you'll see it, it's an amazing piece of kit. Now, the demo units, I think, are available. You can purchase them. If, and if you can, they're probably dev kits and honestly probably expensive. But they will come out later down, I guess, in the next 5, 10 years. You're going to see something similar to that. Matter of fact, Google already had something similar-ish called the Google Glass. Now, I've actually used the Google Glass. I've got to spend quite a number of – I've got to spend quite a lot of time with it. And the problem I have with Google Glass, if you take a look at it, is a prism lens. And what you have to do is you have to look up to view – but you're viewing, and honestly, that's extremely painful to use. I mean, it really causes eye strain. And there, there's a lot of people who have used it. It was really big on the news for a while. I think before they, Google either shuttered the project or they just, you know, they put it on hold just to, because they realized nobody wants this particular model. There were even laws, I think people were discussing, discussing about it because it had a camera built on. And so you're going to have some definitely issues, but sorry, a little bit of a sidebar. So what do you think? I mean, is this something that you you want? I mean, I know for me, it's something I really want. I want augmented reality, especially when I'm on motor, my motorcycle. Now, the Scully a AR1 helmet is the thing you know, I talked about earlier. That's the one I really want to try. I'm going to see if I can contact the company and see if they can send me a, a demo unit. Because to me... That is, the, that is the best thing about technology. Good technology will not only improve your life, but save it. And to me, this is the perfect case. Matter of fact, I think you could even have it in cars. I know a number of years ago, and I don't know if they still do it, Chevy and one of the Corvette models put a heads-up display in their car that would basically a little projector by the dash, by the window, and it project your speed and other information on the glass. A number of years ago, uh, before that, there was a Mercedes model that had a thermal imaging camera, I think, or a night vision camera built in. And I 
see, to me, this is the perfect use for augmented reality is displaying information on your car. Virtual reality I like for gaming. I mean, there's a clip out there of some young lady playing a zombie game, playing Half-Life, playing Halo. See, stuff like that would be cool. Personally, I think it's kind of a gimmick. No, maybe it's just my age. Maybe it's, or maybe it's just, you know, my experiences. I like playing in front of a TV. You know, I like having my Diet Coke in my hand and just kind of relax in that way versus the complete, you know, basically you're shut off from the outside world. What you're seeing, you know, is it's a 365 degree game. And maybe it's just not what I'm used to. I haven't played any virtual reality in a long time. The last time I played it was at the California State Fair with a game called Descent. Now, a little bit of background information. When I was younger, Descent was my favorite game. I was, well, I guess to humble brag a little bit, I rocked at that game. And the was basically what it was is this was basically like a, uh, it was like a cockpit basically had the full controls and all that. And you put the helmets on and you rock and rolled with it. And I liked that as a kid. I don't think I could do it now, mainly because I'd probably get motion sickness. And that's another thing I think people are going to have is, I don't know, are you guys going to need drama mean to do it? Because I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to go on full cruise mode. I'm going to need drama mean, maybe an air sickness bag. I mean, I've been on those simulator rides, you know, they go 365 degrees and afterwards I had to sit down for a couple of days. It's like, you know, the Gravitron at the fair. I went on Gravitron as a kid. I was dizzy for seven days. I'm definitely not the target audience for VR, even though, you know, I'm not a civilian when it comes to technology. I mean, what do you think? Are you guys into the VR augmented reality? Is there something I'm missing here? Let me know. You can contact us via our Facebook page. I'm really, really curious on what you think of it. Because I just don't get it. Augmented reality, I'm totally jazzed about. I want, I've been wanting since day one. But virtual reality, I mean, it's like, I don't, you know, it's, it, it could be, end up being just like Nintendo's Virtual Boy. Is that a flash in the pan? I think it is. I mean, it's just like 3D TVs. And if you take a look at 3D TVs, there's not a lot of 3D TVs being sold anymore. I mean, you still see a lot of 3D TV movies, but... I don't know anybody who has a 3D TV. It's a gimmick, and I think VR is a little bit of a gimmick. No, don't get me wrong. It truly is the next step of gaming. Um, in the 90s, it was a total gimmick because the graphics just weren't there. Nobody, nobody would have bought one and still be using it like a year later. Not even close. I think now with Oculus Rift and the Samsung Gear, I think it's close enough where people are going to start using it and using it and using it. So maybe it's not such a big gimmick, but... I don't know. It is to me. So what do you think? Now, if there's any questions or comments you have on either, any of these stories, you can get a hold of us on the Golden State Media Podcast Facebook page. I want to thank you for listening. And today we talked about the Apple and Microsoft handset problems. We talked about set-top boxes like the Roku. And we also talked a little bit about augmented virtual reality. I want to thank you for listening to today's shows. Now, do you have any comments or questions about any of the topics we discussed today, like Microsoft and Apple's handset problems? set top boxes like the roku or chromecast or do you have any thoughts about virtual reality now make sure you subscribe to golden state media concepts technology podcast on itunes you can also go to gsmcpodcast.com i want to thank you for listening and you can keep up and you can also keep up to date on the facebook page and twitter of golden state media concepts technology podcast